Yo guys, and thanks for tuning in. If you comment last video, you'll know that I'm doing a uh, series covering the new endgame maps, giving you guys the rundown, the 101, the 404, etc. I basically just made up a load of numbers then to sound cool. I'm mixing up some Capture the Flag, Conquest and Rush gameplay so you can really get a feel of the maps themselves, how they look, how they play and such. And that's really what these videos are all about. It's very much about showing off the maps themselves so maybe people who are still on the fence about getting endgame or even Battlefield 3 for that matter, can check it out. So the next map we're taking a look at is an Abandoned Flats. Now you may or may not know that this DLC series has a theme going on and that is Season. So you've got Summer, Winter, Spring, etc. Now this map is the Summer map, so it's set in a... It almost feels a bit deserty at times, very dry, but it's actually a field area. And it's incredibly open in its design, lending somewhat to the Armoured Kill map, Armoured Shield. Now the map centres around the idea of a huge warehouse, which could be a mill maybe, as there are farming buildings around. And it's the central point of the map. Now despite the map being very open, the actual warehouse itself is very enclosed, with containers and crates making it almost very difficult to get through. It's almost a hallway of doom at times. But this is a very important flag because this flag is the central part of the map so this is the one that will branch off to all the other flags but not only that this is the flag that if you control this flag you also control the dropship now in these DLCs the dropship can actually not just drop in parachu uh, parachuters or infantry but it can also drop in vehicles as well in the form of a BMP so this is something that you really do want to control but it's not that easy to control. The building itself, or warehouse, is actually identical to the one used in Back to Karkand for I believe it's either the E or the F flag, right at the back of the map. So you'll know the layout of it instantly, but it's got a lot more containers inside the warehouse. Now the flags themselves are in fairly close proximity, and with the addition of the high speed dirt bikes you can get to the flags almost instantaneously so that really is not a problem in terms of size you can walk to them quite comfortably as well but with a dirt bike you can be up on another flag almost straight away the outer capture points as i said earlier have a theme of a farm there are many harvesters there as well combine harvesters dotted around hay bales that sort of thing now the combine harvesters are there, albeit very small ones, almost midget-like if you like, they're very tiny. And I can't help but feel the dice have missed a trick here. Why not maybe let one of them be drivable like the skid loader on Wake Island? I think that would have been a neat little idea, but alas that is just only a minor quibble. Now due to the actual nature of the layout with the flags being in quite close proximity, it's actually quite easy to flank around due to there being a lot of, dare I say, spare map space around the sides. So if you take a dirt bike, which is usually a good option, you can pretty much flank around the entire area of the map and come right behind your opponents quite easily, because all the fight tends to be focused right in the middle. Capture the Flag is a really fun game mode on this map as well, although it is more difficult, I think, than on some of the others, due to the inherent openness of this map. You can blast along the fields with almost perfectly placed ridges at the end for you to ramp off using your dirt bike, and blast your way along to the enemy flag. But you must remember that this map being so open, you really need to have your wits about you to be able to get that flag safely back to your own base. The enemy scout helicopter will play a key role on this map, maybe more so than on the others because it will be able to see most of the area right above, with some large buildings only for you to hide in should you need to. Of course, you could also try flanking round the sides of the map, like I said, was previously possible. The only downside to using this tactic on Capture the Flag is that if you're in trouble, you probably won't have anything in the way of support, and if the scout helicopter is behind you, you're probably toast. Now remember as well that when you have the flag, there is an indicator right above you telling the other team where their flag is. So you can't just hide and hope they don't come for you, or maybe hide in one of the farming buildings, or maybe just go into the warehouse and think, well, I'll just hide here behind a crate and wait for them to go away and wait for my opportunity. That's just not going to work. The indicator is going to be above your head and you are going to get chased down. So speed is the essence here. You need to get to your base as soon as possible with as little stops in between. The longer you stop and try and hide, the more enemies are going to come for you and try and take that flag back. 
So speed is the essence, which is really why the dirt bikes are so important. So overall, what do I think of this map? Well, I enjoy it. It's a nice map. Overall, as I say, the flags are in close proximity. You can run to them, you can drive to them, you can bike to them, which makes it fun all round. There is a good battle that goes on in the, in the middle of this map, especially with the middle flag being the dropship flag. But overall, I don't think this map has the knockout feel that some of the armoured kill maps have. The Ar Ar Albor's Mountain, uh, which I've used as an example before, is a phenomenal map. This map just almost feels like an also ran to me. It feels like it's been put together using some new elements. A couple of the buildings are new, the Combine Harvester is new, but there's still a lot of rehashed buildings. Um, and rehashed areas. The fields just feel exactly like they have done in previous maps. But it also does feel unique in certain elements. So yeah, it is a good map. I've enjoyed playing it. I think it'll it'll do well. It'll be one of the, the more popular endgame maps. It's not my favourite endgame map. I think uh, the snowy goodness map, as I call it. Uh, I think my personal preference is that one. But it is a, a good map nonetheless. So you should check it out. Um, get your hands on Endgame if you don't already have it because there are some really good maps. I do wish though that the dirt bikes could be carried across to other maps. I know their layout and design doesn't really lend itself to dirt bikes but I do think that some of the, especially the armoured kill maps uh, would be amazing with some dirt bikes in it. Far more entertaining than the quads in my opinion. Um, and it's worth bearing in mind that the dirt bikes are a lot faster than the quads so it does make a difference. But thanks for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one.